Now in this following video, I'd like to demonstrate the technique of preparing the Tissel Fibrin Glue from Baxter. Typically for ophthalmic use, we use the 2ml pack. Prior to the reconstitution before using it in surgery, this pack needs to be refrigerated. That is, it should be kept in the fridge section of the refrigerator prior to the use. It needs to be removed from the refrigerator approximately an hour prior to reconstitution. Let's now understand the constituents of the glue. The kit consists of two boxes. Within the pack, we find four vials two with blue stoppers and two with black. The two blue are mixed with each other and the two black are similarly mixed with each other. Now let's understand the constituents of this pack. Let's start with the blue bottles. The larger blue bottle with the blue stopper contains the freeze-dried sealer protein concentrate which is largely the human fibrinogen. The smaller blue bottle labeled apoprotein contains the synthetic fibrinolysis inhibitor. Let's now get to the black bottles. The larger bottle with the black stopper contains the human thrombin. And finally, the second slightly smaller black bottle contains the calcium chloride solution. When properly reconstituted, the two reconstituted solutions are one, the sealer protein solution, and second, the human thrombin solution. We now look at the second box, which houses the syringes, the needles, and the Duplojet injector system. Now this second larger box consists of all the syringes and the needles required in preparing the solution. In order to make it more convenient and to avoid any pre-mixing of the solutions, remember that the blue syringes with the blue writing on it are used to draw the solution from the blue topped bottles and the black syringes with the black writing on it are used to prepare the solutions in the black topped bottles. Let's now understand in detail the correct technique of reconstitution. Let's now look at the fibrinotherm, which is the warming and the mixing device. The fibrinotherm serves two purposes. One, to preheat the vials to the appropriate temperature of 37 degrees, and two, to bring about an optimal mixing of the solutions to give you the perfect reconstitution. The fibrinotherm has two switches, the orange and the green. At the outset, the orange switch is turned on and it remains on till it reaches the predetermined temperature of 37 degrees. Once the temperature of 37 degrees is reached, a tiny orange light comes on and intermittently keeps coming on and off in order to maintain the temperature at 37 degrees. Now this is the temperature that is required to preheat the vials, that is to 37 degrees prior to their reconstitution. It generally takes from 2 to 5 minutes to be able to achieve the temperature of 37 degrees. The second switch, which is the green switch, is the one that activates the mixer on the fibrinotherm. Once the mixer is turned on and the reconstituted vials placed in their appropriate sockets, it usually takes approximately 10 minutes of mixing to be able to get a complete solution. In this part of the video, you will now see the actual reconstitution and preparation of the fibrin glue. To start with, the orange button is turned on with a view to achieving the correct predetermined temperature of 37 degrees. The four bottles containing the different constituents already discussed are placed in their appropriate slots in the fibrinotherm. These bottles are left in the respective slots for a period of about two to five minutes when they get suitably preheated to 37 degrees prior to the reconstitution. Whilst this is happening, their covers are removed and the rubber sealants are cleaned with a non-iodine based cleanser such as an alcohol swab or spirit. Once suitably heated, we now move to the reconstitution. Please note how we take the syringe with the blue writing on it with the 18 gauge needle connected to it to draw out the apoprotein, which is the synthetic fibrinolysis inhibitor and inject it with care and caution into the larger blue bottle, which contains the freeze-dried sealer protein concentrate. 
Once the blue bottles have been mixed, this reconstituted coeloprotein concentrate with apoprotein in the larger blue bottle is now replaced in its slot in the warmed fibrinotherm. Both while drawing out the apoprotein and whilst injecting it into the dried coeloprotein concentrate, we must ensure that we do not allow any air bubbles to enter either of the vials. We also need to avoid turning the bottles upside down. At most, you can just tilt the bottle slightly on the side while drawing out the apoprotein fluid. You must ensure that the entire contents of the bottle have been completely removed prior to its insertion into the dried protein concentrate. Next, we proceed to creating the thrombin solution. And here's how it's done. Please note how we take the syringe with the black writing on it now connected to a brand new unused 18 gauge needle and this is used to very carefully draw out the calcium chloride liquid. Once drawn out, it then needs to be very carefully injected into the other black bottle containing the thrombin powder. As mentioned earlier, we need to be careful that no air bubbles enter into the drawn out solution. With both the bottles now in the fibrinotherm, the green switch is activated. It takes approximately 10 minutes of gentle mixing for the dissolution of the powders to form a solution. And this is what denotes the end point of the reconstitution. There should be no residual powder in either of the two reconstituted vials. At no point should you ever remove these vials and violently shake them. The only thing that is required, a gentle twirling of these vials in the fibrinotherm, which gives you the optimally reconstituted solution. We now move to the operation theatre, where the scrub nurse now draws out the glue prior to it being used during surgery. Now, once more, corresponding coloured syringes and brand new 18 gauge needles are used to draw out the solutions. So, in order to draw out the thrombin solution, a syringe marked with black and 18 gauge needle connected to it are used to draw it out. This has been demonstrated in this part of the video. In this exact same manner, the fibrinogen solution is also similarly drawn. Now, we have two syringes, the black syringe with the thrombin solution and the blue syringe with the reconstituted fibrinogen solution. At this point, now we have two options. Either both of these individually drawn solutions in separate syringes can be housed into the Duplojet system, which are then connected with the help of a connector to which the cannula is attached, which is then used for a simultaneous injection of both components of the glue onto the scleral bed prior to the addition of the graft. Me personally, I prefer to keep the syringes separate. I connect each of these syringes to a 30 gauge needle and then inject each of the components of the glue separately onto the scleral bed prior to the placement of the graft onto the scleral bed in order to achieve the adhesion. Let's now watch the application of the glue onto the scleral bed in order to achieve the adhesion of the graft in this patient undergoing pterygium surgery. We come to that point in the surgery where dissection of the pterygium head, subconjunctival dissection of the body as well as excision of the pterygium have been completed successfully. Once the scleral bed is defined, We achieve hemostasis in the area of the scleral bed by applying pressure with a cotton bud. Having done so, we are ready for now the application of the glue and the placement of the graph.
Now, in a sequential manner, a couple of drops of both the fibrinogen solution followed by the thrombin solution are dropped onto the scleral bed. Having done so, almost immediately the graft is taken and placed over this glue. It is then flattened out with the help of two McPherson's forceps and you will then see that almost instantaneously the graft is adhered firmly onto its scleral bed. This brings us to the end of the video tutorial on reconstituting and preparing the fibrin glue and its application in ophthalmic use during pterygium surgery.